pregnancy and having little ones. It's Dr. Marjorie Dixon here. There are so many of our viewers that are on that road and thinking about uh, having a baby or getting pregnant, but there are a series of tests that you're going to want to do uh, before you go there just to prepare yourself and, yeah. and know that your body's ready and everything's okay. And it's actually really important that you have things in preparation just because pregnancy, much as we take it for granted, is going to be a healthy and a lovely time there are things that we can choose to make sure that it is the best experience possible. Right, okay, and starting with a pap smear. A pap smear. So our pap smear recommendations have changed over the last little while. If you have had a normal pap smear and you have the same sexual partner for three consecutive pap smears, then you're not having them every year. So you want to be sure that you've had one in anticipation of a pregnancy because God forbid should there be an abnormality or something that needs to be followed and sometimes you need to have your cervix resected or a leap or something happens, some treatment, you don't want to be in early pregnancy or in pregnancy and trying to juggle should I treat my cervix or should I just wait till the pregnancy is over? That's a really tough decision to make okay. and it's easily avoidable. All right, so that's one thing you want to check off the list. Thyroid hormone screen. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. A thyroid hormone screen because women are, we are entitled in our 20s to 40s to have thyroid abnormalities. It's an autoimmune disease and it's very common. Okay. Now, if your thyroid is out of order or it's not well controlled, you're more at risk for miscarriage. And it's harder for you to get pregnant in the first place. Mm -hmm. And also, God forbid that it should be discovered later on in pregnancy. If it is not well managed, hypothyroidism is where you don't have, you have an insufficiency of thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, it can affect the health of the pregnancy through something called cretinism for the infant that develops. And in fact, women who have hypothyroidism or an underfunctioning thyroid mm -hmm. need um, more, so their needs go up in pregnancy. So you need to sometimes increase your thyroid hormone in pregnancy. So it's important to know where you're at, even if you've had previously well controlled thyroid disease mm -hmm. just to have a check-in with your primary care physician in the uh, across the country is this usually a covered screening yeah. this is covered yeah, absolutely and is it open to anyone at any age anyone at any age yeah. oh, i didn't yeah. even realize that yeah. because to take this to a really shallow level right now yeah. isn't also your thyroid responsible for whether you keep weight on absolutely. or you take weight off absolutely so if you were, you were to go Sometimes. and get tested you could find out if that was maybe having part of the reason that you're having metabolic challenge to lose weight, weight yeah I know, and sometimes patients are like, oh my god, I've lost weight, I'm awake, because thyroid, hypothyroid, which is more common than hyperthyroidism, mm -hmm. but hypothyroidism is associated with feeling tired, having brittle nails, cold intolerance, yeah. dry hair, so people, once you get them thyroid replete, they're often like, I feel amazing, this mm. is awesome. And it's, and it's prevalent. Yeah, it's very prevalent. Oh, okay, yeah. good to you know. Go. Yeah. Uh, I'm always looking for someone to blame for my weight, so <laughs> that's cool. She's going to go home get a thyroid. <laughs> Infectious disease screen. So you need to be tested for HIV, Hep A, B, C, mm -hmm. uh, V, D, R, L, chlamydia, gonorrhea. Chlamydia, gonorrhea. Let's so go through the list. These are all those that need to be checked for. Not because you can't be HIV positive and be pregnant. It's just that you need to be managed. And then you need your health to be optimal before we then proceed with the pregnancy. Okay. So those are routine screens. They're across the board also covered. It's public health. So this is information that, you know, whatever province you're in is covered by that province. Okay. And so those are the infectious screens that are general to pregnancy and generally part of the well woman exam anyway. What's VDRL? Syphilis screen. Syphilis, yes. okay. All right, so mm -hmm. make sure you get checked for all of those mm -hmm. and those are on the regular rotation uh -huh. anyways. Uh, screens related to early childhood so, uh, illnesses. So they're rashes, also infectious disease. Exactly. So these are ones that uh, often people who are teachers or daycare providers are very concerned about. Yeah. And sometimes they come to me after they're early pregnant and they're like, I'm not sure I've been screened for this. I'm like, don't worry, in my office we've screened you. But if you come from elsewhere, sometimes the screens aren't there. So varicella or the chicken pox, mm -hmm. there's also a vaccine for that. So mm -hmm. if you're preparing for pregnancy and you're worried about potential exposure in pregnancy, then you can get vaccinated. Okay. Rubella, MMR vaccination is something that we also get in this across Canada. Canada and, um, during the childhood period, actually yep. after birth. So some women, for whatever reason, are not actually immune. So when you test them for their uh, rubella antibodies, they don't have them. So then again, you can get the vaccination. You have to wait four weeks before you can then try to get pregnant. Okay. So these Good are those. Know. And then there's another one, Fifth disease, also known as parvovirus. Children, this is the slap cheeks um, rash, so the, oh. yeah, the kids get, and so sometimes there's an outbreak in a school or a couple kids in the school, and a woman's really pregnant. She wants to know, have I been tested? And unfortunately, if it hasn't been done ahead of time, you can test it. If you see IgG or immune globulin, then you feel happy. If you see IgM, that means that it's a recent exposure, and then that's something to worry about because those early childhood exanthems, the things that manifest themselves with fever and, and rashes for children, mm -hmm. can have an impact on the fetus developing. So you can have cognitive and intellectual deficits if it's in the first trimester.
trimester of pregnancy, problems with hearing, problems with vision. So that's important to know ahead of time in preparation. At your clinic, you would be on top of all this stuff because you're a fertility specialist. Yeah. But for most women out there, we should actually be our own advocates and be thinking about this list, yes. right? Especially I mean, if you have more doctors in different places and yeah. one, not one person that's, that's responsible. That's the challenge, I think, in women's health that we're having, that w women kind of get care in different pieces. And if you're seeing an endocrinologist, the endocrinologist will take care of your hormone situation, so make sure yeah. your, your sugar levels are good so you're not diabetic and make sure that your thyroid is okay. But they might not be on top of all of the other infectious screens Chicken that pox, you need rubella, to have. Like exactly. all of that stuff. Right. Exactly. So to have the conversation and to see your primary care provider and say I'm planning a pregnancy I know there are certain screens that I need to have yeah then they will do them for you okay, okay. Uh, the other thing you want to do and we have a little bit of time for this is just genetic screens yes so this is depending on ethnicity it what are some on of the ethnicity. ones so for example me and you we are at risk of sickle, sickle cell. cell exactly yeah. so these are genetic diseases that are autosomal recessive, so you can be, it's carrier testing essentially, yeah. so if you have a patient from a different ethnic background, Ashkenazi Jewish background is a different group of testing, yeah. or um, Caucasian individuals, uh, the Scottish Irish, all those is risk of um, cystic fibrosis. Mm. So it's different genetic testing depending on also family history, so it's important for your, your doctor mm -hmm. to talk about what is your ethnic background to ask, because you know. You've seen those commercials. You don't know what people were. They come from. You have to ask the specific question because yeah. sometimes people also have a varied background, right. or they'll say, "You know what? Yeah, there's cystic fibrosis in my family, so I, I think I should be screened." And those are things that might require then seeing a fertility specialist and needing IVF to screen for those things. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of planning, and things can be avoided if you do it right. So it's important to have that information before you move forward with the pregnancy. Think about the checklist always.